Okay, so for this video, I'm going to talk about uh, four movies that came out within the past few months, including Dark Waters, Queen and Slim, Honey Boy, and Waves. So let's start off with Dark Waters. Dark Waters is directed by Todd Haynes, and it stars Mark Ruffalo, Anne Hathaway, Tim Robbins, and Bill Pullman. And the film is about Mark Wahlberg, who plays a lawyer, and he's tasked to investigate why a farmer's cows have mysteriously just died. He had 190 cows and they all died. And slowly he begins to learn that there was something in the water that they drank, it was contaminated, and now he's wor he's becoming more suspicious that uh, this company that did this, DuPont, has basically not only dumped this chemical, dumped the chemical willingly, but did put it in all basically they dumped a chemical into water and now it's in pretty much all of us as you'll see in this movie and this movie this movie was definitely very informative it's also very very terrifying to say the least like this movie honestly scared me more than a lot of movies this year because it's like you know this stuff has actually happened like this stuff actually happened and it's just insane that I mean, it's not really that crazy that this happened, but just knowing this is just a lot more terrifying when you see it on the screen and, like, you know now. Okay, I'm worried now. I'm really worried now about my life and the water I drink now. Uh, as far as performances go, they're they're really good uh, overall. Mark, Mark Ruffalo is really good in this movie as he just goes slowly into madness over this case and just dies into paranoia and ultimately... It really takes a toll on him and his family. Anne Hathaway is also really good in this movie. Like, at first you think, oh, this is just her playing the wife of Mark Ruffalo, fine. But then in the second half, she really shines. Uh, Bill Pullman, who was absent in a lot of the ads, but is in the movie, he's also really good in a very brief role. Tim Robbins and Victor Garber, they're also really good. Um... I don't know. Like, the only thing that I would really say is not so good with this movie is that, um, the main villains for from DuPont, they kind of just come across as, like, very typical bad guys, even though this is a basically a true story. This is a true story, not basically a true story. But overall, it's definitely an informative movie. It's a movie that you... It's a movie that you both really need to see just to understand what has happened. But it's not, like, a movie worth rushing out to see at the same time. But it's definitely an informative watch. It's a terrifying watch. Um, I'll still give Dark Waters uh, 3 out of 4 stars. See it. Next up we have Queen and Slim. Directed by Melina Matsuka. I apologize if I mispronounce that name. It's written by Lena Thwaith. And it stars Daniel Kaluuya and Jody Turner-Smith. And the film follows Kaluuya and Turner-Smith as they go on a blind... As they go on a date. The date does not go off so well. First they don't really like each other. And then secondly, they're pulled over by a cop and things escalate and the cop is killed and now they're on the run. Um, I'm not going to go into details over, I'm not going to go into like personal opinions about how I feel about the whole situation that this movie's revolving around. I'm just going to talk about it as a movie. And the movie for the most part is really well done. The acting is incredible, particularly from Kaluuya and Turner Smith. Uh, their relationship as they are on this journey of theirs, it's... It's really fascinating to watch them just grow and kind of learn from each other, learn about themselves, learn about each other, and it's very, very, very powerful, I would say. Um, I would say if I had any issues with this movie, I guess my main issues, my first main, main, issue, main issue is, um, for some reason, like, in conversations, they're, like, talking like normal people would talk, like, you know, talk, conversating back and forth. But then it cuts to them still, like, in that, still in that conversation, but they're not speaking, like, it's voiceover. And I kind of thought that was an odd choice. It didn't, like, match with the movie overall, because, like, they were still behaving like they were in the current scene. But it's, like, random voiceover, and it just felt like it didn't work. Also, I guess the movie is, for the most part, feels repetitive, because it's, like, okay, this happens and we have to escape, this happens, we have to escape, this happens, we have to escape. It's, like, kind of becomes annoying after a while, but it does mix it up every now and then. And overall, this movie really works because of uh, Kaluuya and Turner Smith more, more than anything. And it was one of the few movies where, you know, I was actually not not only in shock, but like in tears throughout the, by the end. 
it's one of the few movies that actually like got me this year in terms of tears. So, uh, Kluya, Turner Smith are great. Just some narrative issues that I had problems with and creative choices that I had issues with overall. I'll give Queen and Slim three out of four stars. See it. Next up is Honey Boy, directed by Alma Haral and his stars Shia LaBeouf, Noah Jupe, and Lucas Hedges. And this was actually written by Shia LaBeouf, uh, inspired by his own childhood as a child actor and his subsequent falling out as an adult. And the film follows uh, a young actor played by Noah Jupe, who is a, a child actor who is trying to make it big with his dad, who's also his manager. His dad's played by Shia LaBeouf. So, and it also deals with uh, Lucas Hedges as he's an adult version of the child actor in rehab. And overall, this is a very well-acted movie, particularly from Shia LaBeouf. He is incredible in this movie, playing the dad. Because there are times throughout this movie where it's like, oh, I just hate this guy. Like, I really hate this guy. But then there are some points where you're like, you understand where he's, where he's coming from. You tr you kind of sympathize with him. And Noah Jupe is also really good as uh, the child actor, uh, as Otis, in the movie. He's really good. Uh, their, their relationship, while well, toxic, is... Very fascinating to see. Uh, Lucas Hedges is also good, but he's not as good as uh, LaBeouf and Jupe. Um, and that's kind of my main issue with this movie. Uh, Lucas Hedges' scenes in this movie, even though they're technically part of you know, the story, they're part of this character's life, they don't mesh well in the movie. They just... I don't know. They feel like they belong in a different movie for me. and Which is weird because, again, this is the same character you know, in the past, and the present, and it just didn't flow for me that way, and kind of dragged, even though this movie's only about an hour and a half, which is odd, because they're, like, all these other movies are much longer, and this is the shortest one, and I felt like this one was the longest. Um, there are times in this movie where it was heartbreaking, it was funny, it was a very interesting therapy session, I would say, like, I said that about A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, that was basically a therapy session in a movie, but... Eh, honey Boy, it's kind of the same. It's a therapy session as well. I just don't know if it really meshed as well as it thought it was. But Shia LaBeouf is fantastic in this movie with uh, this and the Peanut Butter Falcon. It's like, I kind of wouldn't be surprised if LaBeouf comes back in the next few years after, you know, everything he's been through in the past few years. But this is definitely worth a watch at some point. I would say, Honey, oh yeah, Honey Boy, three out of four stars. See it. And the last movie I'm talking about in this video is Waves, written directed by Trey Edward Schultz, who previously did the movie It Comes at Night, a movie I actually did not see. Um, and it's kind of hard to describe what this movie's about, because I could either go really, really simple with it, or I could just go into detail with this. And I do not want to go into detail with this movie, because I was caught off guard by pretty much everything in this movie. The acting is incredible all across the board. Uh, particularly from uh, Kelvin Harrison Jr., Sterling K. Brown, Taylor Russell. They're all fantastic in this movie. Um, you understand where each character is coming from. You, They show such a wide range of emotions in their performances. They are some of the best performances of the year, honestly. Um, where this movie might split some people is how some things happen in the middle. Because there's... There's some things that happened in the middle that, at first, I was not on board with. I kind of didn't understand why they had to go in this direction. And then, they do address that later on in the movie. And I'm like, okay, it's, it's working. It kind of works. And even though it's like, you don't like what these characters do in this movie, you can at least forgive them if, you know, they recognize what they did was wrong. And, and that's the thing, like, I don't know if I was really on board with the structure at first, but as the movie went along, I was, I was completely on board with it. I thought this was, like, thought this was, like, a very unique experience overall, with uh, great performances, great cinematography. The camera feels like it's always moving, no matter what, and I thought that was a very interesting choice and kept me interested in the movie. The soundtrack and score are incredible. Uh, the story is incredible. It's it's a movie that I don't know. 
I don't think it's going to reach a lot of people, unfortunately. But this was one of the movies that, like, Queen and Slim, this one also really got to me. I think this one got to me more than Queen and Slim did. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to go for it for Waves. I'm going to say four out of four stars. See it. See it. So, those are my reviews for those four movies. Uh, what, have you seen any of these movies? What did you think of them? Comment down below. Uh, also, what was the biggest surprise of 2019 to you? Like, what was the movie that caught you off guard? Like, you didn't expect to like it or you didn't hear anything about it. And then you saw it and you're like, that was actually really good. I'm really glad I saw that movie. Uh, so comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. This is Pat. Take care.